Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas online. Don't you love Christmas? Come on. Anybody else like me? You get about 11 months later from now, and you almost kind of forget about Christmas. You know it's coming, but anybody else, you just see Christmas again with fresh eyes every single year. And as my good friend Andy Williams says, it's the most wonderful time of the year. One of my favorite Christmas songs. But what is it about Christmas that you love? I think part of it could be just the fact that we see some of the best parts of humanity, the goodness that uh, God has placed in us and made us in his image. And we see, you know, generosity and, and helping each other out and warm greetings and things like that. I think it's also what? Christmas movies. Anybody? You've been filing through your Christmas movies, right? We have our favorites as well. Christmas trees, right? Christmas goodies, I was, I'm always excited about it, but then I'm also not excited about it. You know, I lost about five or six pounds before our Christmas fest. I was really happy. And then one of our uh, members here, uh, an awesome lady, awesome cook, gave me not a plate, but a tray, a mound of, of Christmas cookies, chocolate chip cookies, yes, but my sugar cookies. And anybody else, you substitute those cookies for meals? Like, I was like, I think four sugar cookies is equal to a breakfast. I can tell you it's not equal. I can absolutely tell you it is not equal, and I won't tell you why. But regardless, but we love that, right? We love the different parts about Christmas. We love Christmas music. But if we're going to go down to it, I, I think, anybody else with me, that your favorite thing, if you pulled away everything else, besides, of course, Jesus, and the reason this season, it's Christmas lights. After we do all the other stuff, I can just literally look at our white flocked Christmas tree. And yes, that's the closest thing I want to get to in snow in Florida is we have a white flocked Christmas tree with just white lights, a few decorations just staring at those lights and seeing my toes peeking out underneath my flip-flops. That is Christmas. I could stare at them and if I actually accumulated the time, I do stare at those Christmas lights for hours. Makes me think about, you know, I'm hearing some of the little kids that we have here. We're so glad that you brought your kids today. But kids, don't you love Christmas lights too? And I remember uh, just hearing these little kids. I met some in the first service. I go, this was the age when we lived in Hawaii, another great place to live in Christmas time. And we lived in Hawaii, and we took the kids in the car, and we went around looking for this special neighborhood that was known for Christmas lights. You know, think Clark Griswold, but every house, like 12 houses that, you know, they, they had to put a nuclear reactor on just to keep all the lights going. But it was amazing, and as we drove down the street, my little girl, she, Jordan, was a baby, maybe, maybe a toddler, right around that bubble, and all of a sudden, we're hearing noises come from her that we've never heard. She was squeaking wheeling, laughing, not crying with tears, but just, just screaming with joy. And Jonathan was just going, wow, wow, wow. Light changes the atmosphere. There's something about light. You know, there's something about the sun too, right? Science, without getting into it too heavily, says we need the sunlight. Do you know to be Healthy and strong, you need vitamin D from sunlight. It gives us energy, doesn't it? You ever see somebody that looks extra tan, but they got more of a bounce to their step? It's the chemical processes of sunlight that our bodies need it. You know that the sunlight can also give you uh, increased serotonin levels, which gives you a sense of calm or just even happiness. There are people up north that are fake baking in sun tanning beds, not to get a tan, but to get that feeling that comes from their absence of sunlight. They just have to make up with it. And the rest of you that came down for Christmas say, amen, you're glad you're here. But us Floridians, that's why we moved here, right? I believe so. I believe so. There was one time when we moved to Chicago. We went from living in Hawaii uh, to Christmas in Chicago. It was right before Christmas. And my wife in February was like, honey, I'm just feeling kind of down. I'm feeling kind of blue. And she's not like that. She goes, I don't know what's wrong with me. I was like, I know what's wrong. We haven't seen the sun in three to four months, you know? And there's something to that. And everything that God says and everything that God does, he does for a reason. And when I was thinking about Christmas lights and just the sun, and it came back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Listen to this. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. 
And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. The first words, never help me till this Christmas. The first words God spoke to creation and he spoke to us, his created, are four words. Let there be light. And He says it for a reason. It's who he is, it's who we are and how things are supposed to be. And I love this. And God saw the light and it was good and he separated it from the darkness. And I was just meditating on that. In the beginning, everything was perfect. Everything was light. Everything was calm. Everything was bright. We're going to sing that song. And then Adam and Eve made a choice, just like we all have, and they sinned. And it broke that perfection. And darkness, evil came in the world. Darkness came into the world, and it changed absolutely everything. We see the ongoing ramifications of this. You know, if you watch the news, I don't really watch the news that much because it's kind of depressing. But there still is darkness in the world. We see it through crime and murder and suicides and scandal. And we see it in greed. We see it in drug abuse. We see it in wars. We see it in all sorts of different ways. But it's not the way God intended it. It's not the way that he wanted it. And he's already given us the cure for it. The world is a mess. And a lot of times people blame God. But it's really not God's fault. It's mankind's. And there's a guy named Albert Einstein that obviously he was brilliant, one of the greatest minds ever, but he changed later on as he got older. Instead of just looking at the created and trying to figure out through mathematical calculations how this world works, he changed from looking at the created to looking at himself and the creator. Listen to what Albert Einstein said about this. God did not create evil. Evil is not like faith or love that exists just as does light and heat. Evil is the result of what happens when man does not have God's love present in his heart. It's like the cold that comes when there is no heat or the darkness that comes when there is no light. But the good news is Christmas was and is God's solution. 2,000 years ago, God brought that first Christmas. And I want you to sit there and look at the first few words in Genesis of the Old Testament of God's revelation and the first few words speaking of Christ's life. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and he's speaking of Jesus is the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the, with, in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I'm going to say it again. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So just as he said, let there be light... When Jesus came, he said, let there be life, and that light was the life of men, and that life was the light of men. Those two truths are going in conjunction with each other. And when God says the word life, we just think of life as being existent, right? No, no, no. The Greek word here is the word zoe. It means effervescent life. Anybody old enough to remember Alka-Seltzer commercials, right? Bubbling up life. Or San Pellegrino for everybody else, right? I mean, it's, it's something where the best things in life are happening, right? It's where you God speaking of his love and his joy and his peace bubbling up inside of people. It's his kindness, his goodness, his faithfulness bubbling up inside of us. That when his life touches your life, the natural byproduct is the good things of God happening in, in and through the good things that he's doing in you. And the Bible just calls it fruitfulness. It means that God's life and his goodness doesn't stop through you. It flows through you. It's magnified. It's multiplied through you. And I want you to hang on to that as we keep talking about it. It's a life filled with relationship with the creator and you, his created. But he's not just your creator at a distance. You can have friendship with him. You can have intimacy with him. That you have the ability to know him and to be known by him and to experience life and to have his presence. It's a life where it's full of relationship with also others that he's created like you. And he even says in the Bible, go eat, drink, and be merry. Enjoy life. It's a life full of life. Say it with me. A life full of life. 
a life-filled life. So let's get back to the light again. This is how it works. I geeked out on this. I started studying up about light. Do you know when we light these candles later, billions of chemical reactions are happening off of every single candle. Don't trust me. Trust NASA, right? I studied it up. What is light? Light is a bundle of photon particles that radiates. It radiates in weaves, waves and beams of energy. And as I was meditating on it, they didn't say this online, but I was thinking about it. You and I can't see light. Did you know that? We can only see its source. And you can only see the reflection or the refraction once that transparent light hits somebody, but it is emitting an energy. God's light is emitting life, and you can see it in him, the source, but you also get to, you're the receiver, you're the recipient, you're the reflector, you're the refractor. Like, I'm looking at you, I can see all these faces, I can't see you online, that's impossible, but good to have you here. But I can see even some people up in the balcony, but can you see the light between you and I? No. It's the same thing with God's spirit. You can't see God's spirit, but it doesn't mean he's not there. And he, like that light, is emitting to anyone who will receive him. And as you do that, I'm just going to say again, we're going to have the candles. Pastor Tim, can you hand me the candle? I forgot to bring my candle. You're a candle made in God's image. You have... An eternal spirit, just like he does, it's like that wick. There's a latent potential inside every single one of us made in our creator's image. And you have that wick. But what good is a candle if you don't light it? And you and I can't light ourselves. It's only something that Jesus does with his love and his flame and his life. Are you guys catching that? So when we go here in a moment and we sing this I want you to think about all that God offers of himself and all that can happen in our, in our lives. Put this down, all the attributes of Jesus' nature, his love, his power are offered to you and I. That light also speaks of righteousness, that God's purity, this is the one that hits me, God's purity and God's goodness can be my goodness and can be your goodness. It's called holiness, it's called purity. That he offers to work miracles through us that in him, we can actually pray in the name of Jesus and miracles will happen. Amen? That you and I can be a peacemaker, that you and I can be an encourager, that you and I can, can not only receive faith, we can share faith and it can change people's lives. The most important part is, is like a candle, when it's lit, his light and your candle, together darkness has to flee. Yes, we're living in a world where there's darkness but it doesn't mean that you and I cannot be a light. Amen? Amen? Your life and his light together, darkness has to flee. Albert Einstein continued on in his journey seeking God. And he said something in here that's profound but actually is quite sad. Listen to this. He said, I once thought that if I could ask God one question, I would ask how the universe began. Because once I knew that, all the rest is simply equations. But as I got older, I became less concerned with how the universe began and rather how I would want to know why he started the universe. For once I knew that answer, then I would know the purpose of my own life. God's revealed in his word and by his actions that already. Yes, he said, let there be light. And yes, when Jesus came, he said, let there be life. But in Matthew chapter 5, I wish I could have read this to Albert Einstein. This is your and my purpose. Verse 14, Jesus speaking. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Are you catching it? He said, let there be light, and he gave life light. He said, let there be life, and he gave his son Jesus, who gave his life. But then Jesus 
summed it all up. He said, let my light, let my life be your light, be your life. Let your light shine. That means he puts a light inside of us. We don't always have to wait for God to do something. He's waiting for us to do something. He says that your good deeds, as we're finishing out Christmas, as we're turning into the next year, let the goodness of God shine through you and you be to that that friend, to that lonely person. You be that encouraging word to that fast food worker that doesn't seem too happy. Anybody else, you're kind of nervous when you go through the drive-thru, right? You ever think maybe they just have a really rough life, right? You come along some, somebody, not just with encouragement, but with your life, right? Be their friend. Maybe meet that need in their life. Give them that ride. Invite them to introduce them to other people. All these different things. Most people just want to be loved and valued and seen. And God's given you and I the ability to do that through his light given to you and I and through the good deeds that we choose to do. So I just want to challenge you as we go finish Christmas and we go to the next year, let your light shine. Right now, just ask God. Say, God, I want you to burn brighter in my heart. I want you to burn brighter in and through me. Anybody that opens up, whether you've been serving him your whole life, whether you've just come to know him in the last few years or months, or maybe you don't even have a relationship with him, you can start somewhere. You can start right now and just say, God, Jesus, come in your fire and light the wick of my life. I invite you in. And he will come and do all the work that we cannot do ourselves. And all this is possible every single day. We don't have to wait for Christmas because we have the Christ of Christmas. But 2,000 years ago, let's contemplate God's love He came down and he lit the light. Went into Mary's womb. And they got to observe him for 33 years. Can you imagine raising a sinless child? That alone is a miracle, right? And then at the age of 33, he revealed himself to others. Pastor Tim, would you come? I'm gonna invite everybody to stand. And he revealed himself to others. And his light became their light. And it was him and the 12. And then it was hundreds. Then it was thousands, tens of thousands. After his resurrection, it went from thousands to hundreds of thousands to millions to tens and hundreds of millions to where now literally billions. And that one light began to light up the whole world. And you and I are its continuation. I'm going to ask those that are helping a child just to help them to keep the candle upright. Please keep your candles upright. Ask them to dim the house lights as we sing this. But let this be a physical and visual illustration of what God is doing in your heart and wants to do in your heart this next year as well. Let's sing.
before we blow them out, I just want you to take a moment just to look around. This is what Jesus can and will do in every single one of our hearts. And the flame can continue to burn brighter and brighter as we let him go be the light of the world. Jesus loves you. Amen. Receive his love.